Those meeting to order at 7.05 p.m. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Council Member O. Vesa Martinez. Here. Council Member Tucker. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Alcarano. Here. And Mayor Burnwood. Here. And Council Member Mendoza, absent for the record. Would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Mr. Warrego, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Ready again. I to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Reagan, do you have any adjustments to the agenda? There are, there are no adjustments to the agenda, Madam. Uh, Ms. Turner, do we have any um, anything to report out in closed session? Yes, the council have met in closed session and discussed three active uh, litigation matters as listed on the agenda. Direction was given to council on each item. The council also discussed conference with labor negotiators as listed um, on the agenda. Direction was given to the negotiators. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Um, now we move on to public comment. For matters not appearing on the agenda, if you wish to address the City Council concerning any item within the City Council's jurisdiction, please raise your hand and be acknowledged by the Mayor. At that time, please state your name and address for the record. The Mayor reserves the right to place a time limit of three minutes on each person's presentation. It is requested that longer presentations be submitted to the City Clerk's office in writing 48 hours before the meeting. Do we have any public comments for tonight? Sir, please step up to the podium. Uh, I guess I have to state my name. Yes, your name and address for the record, please. David Graham, 609 North C Street, Imperial. I've been here as a citizen of the city of Imperial for 53 years. Um, what the problem is that I need to discuss is, is uh, we have a construction project going on with the Duggins Construction. And um, I've been trying to get a straight answer from somebody from the city, but I haven't been able to get a straight answer from anybody because... Uh, they started working at 5 o'clock in the morning. Is there anything that can be done about them starting to work so early? Because I made a noise complaint. The police department didn't do anything about it. It's happened before with Duggins, and nothing was done about it because the police department didn't know what can we do. It's a noise complaint. They should be going over there and saying, hey, you know what? So what can the city do about this? Because I'm sick. I don't know if you know me. I'm sick. I'm not supposed to be out here in the heat. If you can see the tubes, I can get infections and die, but I'm here because of this. The Duggins Construction Company has done so many things, and they uh, make promises like uh, we weren't supposed to get closed off from our backyards, and we have a fence that blocks us off, so are we going to get our access back to our backyard again? That's one of my questions. The other one is like the time that they can start. What time? Because no city employee knows when they can start working. Five o'clock in the morning for me is way too dang early. I wake up at four o'clock in the morning to go to dialysis for three days a week, and then I have to wake up at five in the morning because these people are starting work at five o'clock in the morning. So can, can anybody that's, because I've call, called the city about the, the, the building department about it. I had never gotten any answer about it. And so I need to know when can these people start working because they make a lot of freaking noise. Sir, as the, as the city attorney, I would like to have a, a conversation with you tomorrow after I double check. Um, it depends on whether it's a conditional use permit or it's our ordinance. So I just want to double check because I don't want to be giving the wrong information to you. Well, that's but what it, I want to find out. Is there an ordinance? Because nobody knows. Like I said, I, I had the police called on me at 1 o'clock in the afternoon because I have my stereo on. I have three police officers out there getting on me about my music at one o'clock. These guys are doing this stuff at five in the freaking morning. And, and I'll be able to answer that that for you. Well, if you can call me, I'll leave you. Because uh, I, like I said, I'm not supposed to be out here in the heat because this thing can get infected and I can die. I'm not exaggerating. it. The doctor tells me I can die if I get an infection. I also have something else that I wanted to talk about if I need to, if I can do it now or not. And it's about city employees. Uh, I've had a city employee come over and threaten to find me, threaten to
to take my vehicle away out of my driveway. I mean, can you guys do that? And then next thing you know, he comes over and tells me to put new tires on my car. I, I'm blind. I can't drive my car right now. I have tires that only have 3,000 miles. I'm not going to go out and replace them because the city employee is telling me to go out and replace them. He hasn't told me what the problem is about it, but because he hasn't discussed nothing with me about it. And I've been, I've, I've, I've had these problems with him for a while. So can a, a city employee tell me that they can tow my car and charge me for it out of my driveway for some reason, even though the neighbors have vehicles all over the place? They have work trucks and stuff parked in the alley all over the place, but somehow he bugs me about my car and my stuff, but he doesn't hit the neighbors for having vehicles off their property for years. And then there's cars all over the streets that have been parked for years. And I mean when I say years, eight, nine, ten years out in the streets. But this person doesn't see these things. And then my last thing, if I can say it, um, when we have a problem with a city employee, and I'll just tell you straight out, police department, who can we report that to? Because I was walking through the park one day when I was working, trying to catch the bus. I have a police officer stop me, and I know this isn't legal. You're the attorney. Let me know if it is or not. Police officer stops me and calls me over. So I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a lawful citizen. So I go over to see what he wants. I just want to get to know you. I got to get to work. If I don't get to work on the bus, and I had to take the bus to El Centro, I get fired. Because the job I had, they'll fire you just for that, showing up late. This officer held me and held me. I finally left because I said, did I do anything? Okay, bye. I got to go. I got to catch the bus. The other officer that was training stepped in my way and kept me from leaving. Okay, so you're the attorney for the city. They wouldn't let me go until I showed them an ID. And then they ran me for warrants and they finally let me go. Can, you're the city attorney, can your officers, because I went to complain to the, the, the police chief. And when I started talking about his officers, about the stuff that they were doing, because I had two run-ins with the police department. Everybody that knows me, I don't get in trouble normally for anything, especially when I'm trying to get to work. You know, and I'm being held and possibly get fired because a police officer's holding me. You know? Sir, I encourage you to make a meeting with our city manager and our city attorney, and they'll handle all of your issues that you have. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I went to the police chief. The police chief, all he did was he called somebody to come shut his door so he didn't hear what I'm saying. I couldn't go to the police department. I asked who I could talk to, and nobody told me. Sir, I'm to telling you to talk stuff. to our city manager. Make an appointment with our city manager well, and our I, city attorney, and I'm, they will handle these issues. And luckily, I'm, it's too hot. Like I said, I get bacteria in this. I die. I can't be out in the heat. Yeah, sir, we can do that. And they, they are in the office. office. They yes, can they talk, can give you a call. They can talk to me on the phone. Yes. If you leave your phone number, Mr. Morita will give you his card, or you can leave him, your phone number with him. And we'll resolve these issues. Well, I'm blind, so I can't see it either way. Okay. Can you tell him your phone number then? So okay. So he can give you a call tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we will move on. Do we have any other public comments for tonight? Madam Clerk, do we receive any via email? No. Oh, perfect. Now we'll move on to special presentations um, with A1 recognition of the Imperial High School girls varsity softball team. So as most of you know, um, the city, we, as a city, we just wanted to recognize that 
our softball girls won CIF and they went all the way to um, the state semifinals and we wanted to give each of you a certificate um, and recognize you for your great um, season that you had. So, um, are we going to call everybody to the front? Okay, so we'll just call everybody up to the front. We have a certificate for everybody. Um, yeah, and then we'll stand back here and we'll take a group photo if that works for you guys. Um, Alexa Roblox? Steve Caro, <laughs> we'll squeeze it into the picture. We'll squeeze this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Please in. Yeah, we can open them. What did you Um, yeah. So congratulations, ladies. I look forward to seeing you guys uh, do really well again next season. And so now we'll move on to A2 Trunk or Treat event evening featuring Drifters Car Club. Yo, uh, Nancy Amparano uh, will be presenting this to the council. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I wanted to thank you all for letting us come tonight and just inform you of an, uh, an event that we'll have coming up. It's an additional event to those that are currently on our roster. It, uh, we're happy to announce that we'll be partnering with uh, the Drifters Car Club to hold our first annual Trunk or Treat event. It'll be at Eager Park on October 27th from 6 to 10. Um, you can see up there on the screen, uh, we'll be having live music, food vendors, contests, prizes, and many more fun things that are um, yet to be determined. Uh, the, the, the event layout will be similar to the last couple events that we had at Eager Park, which were the Autism Fair and In the Park After Dark. Uh, the setup will be similar to those. Um, the idea of this partnership, it came up at our last event. 
they, um, the Drifters Car Club uh, came to us and, and gave us this idea for consideration to bring the event here to Imperial. And a couple, of course we loved it and that's why we're here tonight. <laughs> but um, we have some of the representatives of the car club here with us tonight and I'm just gonna invite them up so that they can answer any questions that you may have and maybe go over the history of the event and why they wanted to bring it to Imperial. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. No need to apologize. Good evening. <laughs> My name is Joe Busso, and I'm a member of the uh, Drifters Car Club. I'd like to give you a little brief history of the Drifters Car Club and the Trun Trunk or Treat show. The club, the club was formed in the year 2000 by local car enthusiasts, primarily to hang out, talk about cars, share ideas, what have not, and participate in some of these car shows, what, what have not. As the club grew, we started to support a lot of the charitable uh, organizations, helping out on different type of uh, needs for the community. And we would do that by having some events and do some fundraising. One of our activities to raise some of that money to support some of these groups was the trunk of treat. In the first year, the first time we had it, maybe we had about 15 cars, not that many. Um, just a few kids come around trick or treating, which is fine. By the ninth event, we had over 100 cars, all decked out in Halloween. I mean, we brought a little uh, sample here of some of our past events, so you could say, um, pretty fun night. But uh, we had over 100 cars all decked out. And we had over, I mean, it, it was hundreds of kids who were passing candies out too. We're talking about $80, $100 per vehicle, just to be able to provide as much candy as we could for all these kids, there were so many. That was the last event. Uh, due to COVID, we haven't had an event for the last three years. Um, last year, however, uh, City of El Centro, we used to have our event at the uh, Food for Less parking lot. And we were very thankful for them to allow us to use that uh, parking lot. It was it was a good venue. Um, but last year we had uh, the city of El Centro had their own trunk of tree. And we went out, we had a nice event, well attended, a lot of kids, a lot of, a lot of activities, that was fine. Um, Christ Community also has a little trunk of tree for the city of El Centro, which is fine, great. We participate with them, we help them out as well. Uh, but this year, being that it appears that City of El Centro is going to be taking over Trunk and Treat, which is fine, give something for the community. That's what we what it's all about. Uh, we decided to move this event. Uh, we were here at the uh, dark, what is the park after dark event? Well, well attended, and brought up the idea of maybe having this as a venue. Uh, City of Imperial hasn't had a Trunk and Treat per se. So we'd like to be able to bring that uh, experience over to your city. And we're really happy that uh, we're working with uh, both Tony and, and Nancy. Uh, we're really looking forward to having a fun event. So we're really, we're, uh, really happy to have you and have this event within the city of Imperial. Um, my, I know my kids will look forward to it. So, Thank you. Same here. I, I did get a chance to see the vehicles that you guys had at the uh, Park After Dark, and that was nice addition to that event so glad you guys are part of it girl thank you i also just wanted to take a, a minute to mention that we do have another event that's coming up in just a couple of weeks it's the end of summer bash it's going to be august 11th from six to nine it's going to be an imperial pool and it's going to be a luau themed event that's going to mark the end of summer. So hopefully everyone can make it out to that one. Now moving on to item A3, uh, IV 9-11 stair climb event.
Good evening, uh, Mayor Burnworth, City Council members, community members. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, this evening. My name is Carlos Pitones. Uh, sitting down as well is Mike Harvey and Tiffany Macias. We are members of the Imperial Valley 9-11 Memorial and Stair Climb Committee. Our committee is formed of members that represent the firefighter community, the law enforcement community, and public and private organizations who are dedicated to ensuring that the Imperial Valley never forgets the tragic events that took place on September 11, 2001. We do this by hosting a memorial stair climb that honors, respects, and pays tribute to 343 FDNY firefighters, the 60 law enforcement personnel, and the 10 emergency medical personnel who made the ultimate sacrifice as a result of the terrorist attacks on that Tuesday morning in 2001. This year marks the 22nd anniversary of September 11th. And for the Imperial Valley, we will host the 10th annual 9-11 Memorial and Stair Climb event. We host it at the grandstands here in the Imperial Valley Fairgrounds. This year, it will be on Saturday, September 9th. The memorial ceremony will begin at 7.45 p.m., followed by our stair climb at 8 p.m. Our memorial stair climb is a way for the community to come together to remember the heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice on September 11th. Each participant will climb or walk the equivalent of 110 stories of the World Trade Center, carrying the name and the photo of a fallen hero to symbolically complete their climb. At this time, I'd like to show you a video of last year's event. Um, the video will show uh, the memorial ceremony and part of the, uh, the walk that the participants took place in. Uh, last year's ceremony was a little different than previous ceremonies because of the weather. Um, uh, this year, we hope to incorporate the grandstands again uh, for this year's event. If we can have that video.
Kentucky. It's a family friendly event uh, held here in, in our great city of Imperial. Uh, just to cover some of the details of the event, uh, registration, we do have early registration for participants. Uh, it is open now through September 8th, the day before the event, for $25. And then we do have on-site registration on the day of the event for $35, starting at 6 p.m., so a few hours before the, the actual event kicks off. Uh, participants that register before August 25th will be able to receive their event t-shirt on, on the day of the event. Uh, anybody who registers after the 25th will receive their t-shirt after the event at some point. Um, registration can be completed at www.iv911.org or 911.org. Um, in addition to stair climb participants or stair climb walkers or walkers, uh, we're also looking for sponsors and vendors to join us in making our event as successful as possible. Sponsorship opportunities come in four different levels, ranging from $343, and each number is significant to, to 9-11. Uh, 413, which is the total amount of firefighters, law enforcement personnel, and emergency medical personnel who made the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, $911 for 9-11. For and $2,001 for 2001 for the year. And each level receiving different degrees of recognition, advertisement, event memorabilia, and sponsorship dinner invitations for a, a dinner that we host for the sponsor appreciation a few weeks after the event. Uh, vendors can also register for our event at no charge, but will agree to donate 10% of their earnings to the event of the Imperial Valley 9-11 Memorial and Stair Climb event. Uh, funds that are raised during this event uh, will go to the Imperial Valley 9-11 Memorial Stair Climb 501c3. That will provide charitable assistance to local firefighters and their families. We'll also promote scholarship opportunities for members of the community. And it will also assist us in developing the Imperial Valley 9-11 Memorial that we uh, would like to build at the entrance of the fairgrounds here in Imperial as well. Um, in closing, I want to thank you for this opportunity to present this information. Uh, we invite everyone in the Imperial Valley to come out to join us, whether it's as a spectator, as a participant, a sponsor, or even a vendor. Uh, we appreciate the assistance in having the Imperial Valley observe and remember this special day. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll take them at this time. Questions? Questions, comments from the council? I would just say, like past years, I think we need to get Imperial this team together again and try to beat out some of those other cities that we do visit or do show up. I know last year, El Centro had a big show in, so maybe we can go back and try to help them out. I know Jackie is there, but in a different capacity. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's uh, respects to that because, you know, that's, that's tough also. But um, so maybe we can do something. Perfect. Okay, Challenge thank accepted. You. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, moving on to item A4, update on North Point Development Project um, Imperial Hotel. Good evening, uh, Mayor Burnworth, City Council. And members of the community, um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to give an update on our North Point development. My name is Victor Nava, Director of Strategy, Development, and Partnerships for GAFCON. And first off, I would like to introduce our new team member, Fernando Ramos. Um, he's our new Director of Project of Operations in Imperial Valley. His career spans 30 plus years as a project manager and engineer in multiple roles and in industries. Uh, we are very proud to have another local hire that will assist us with our current and future development and projects. So we want to welcome, we want to introduce you to, to Fernando. Yeah. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. So to, to moving on, uh, update on the hotel. So we're very pleased with our progress um, on the hotel. Uh, the drywall and painting are substantially completed on the fourth and third floors. Uh, drywall is being installed in the second floor and lobby is being prepped for drywall. So we're really uh, looking at the progress from the top floors all the way to the bottom, and that's coming along. Contractors are working on the restaurant, kitchen, elevator pits, 
and lobby areas at this time. U.S. supply chain issues have affected the delivery of the three elevators and electrical switchgear. Uh, these items were ordered a year in advance and scheduled to be delivered December of uh, end of this year and January 2024. So once these items are installed, inspected, and approved, the hotel is expected to open quarter two of next year of 2024. So in addition to the hotel on the corner of Nickel and 86, well, actually, let me go back to the pictures, a couple of pictures. That's actually one of our, actually, that's the hallway of the fourth floor. So as you can tell, the, uh, the ceiling's painted and drywall's prepped for painting. If you go to the next uh, slide, that's one of our uh, larger suites. Again, painted and ready uh, for flooring. And then the next slide, uh, that's actually one of our smaller rooms. Uh, prepped and ready for flooring as well. So super excited to see the progress and um, you know we look forward to, to, to moving on uh, with the project on that, that aspect. So in addition to the hotel on the corner of 86 and Nickel, we are pleased to share with you that we have signed a lease with Circle K for the corner of, of for that corner. It'll include a gas station, convenience store, car wash, and EV charging station. So that'll be their largest uh, Circle K in the Imperial County. And then we're also pleased with the progress that we're making on InterCare Healthcare uh, Complex. Uh, we hope to have groundbreaking, uh, hopefully in the next uh, next six to eight weeks. So super excited about that. So, any questions? Excited to see it going up. Yeah, yeah. there's a picture of different progress. from the last time I seen it when it was just all wood and frame. So um, definitely nice change. You're welcome Can't wait. for the council to do a tour as well if you want to continue and maybe the next uh, three to four weeks you'll see more progress. So. Is there air conditioning in there? Um, a kitchen? No, air, air conditioning. conditioning. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Trying it out for winter, right? Yeah, it's exactly. Really nice. We have a uh, indoor swimming pool and stuff. <laughs> the lobby, it, it's, it's going to be, I can all, already imagine how it's going to look. So, really, really nice. so my son and I did a tour at the beginning of well mid June, so I think we'll refrain until it cools off to yeah. the next one. <laughs> I, I, yes, I do remember the groundbreaking. We did take a picture inside in front of the bar. So, Mr. Nava, it will have conference capability. Yeah, we will have an event center and mm -hmm. a pre functioning area as well for events. It'll ho hopefully hold about 175 people. Awesome. So, we do have renderings of that now, what it's going to look like. So yeah, as progress happens, we're already getting inquiries, by the way, for people to reserve that. And as in, people don't even have any seen it. So it's pretty interesting. I think you can, it's safe to say everybody's excited to get this hotel done. Um, Absolutely. Probably no more than you guys, but <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll see it from my backyard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when did you say the possible opening? Uh, Q2. Q1, um, April 1st, we're targeting. It could be sooner if we get the elevators sooner. Then it'll be uh, around that. It'll be before April first, but they've been ordered since uh, yeah. a year ago. So we're hoping to get the uh, the elevators by by the end of this year, and then uh, we'll get the switch gear. Uh, uh, and do you know when you're in a break ground on the inner care facility? Hopefully in the next six to eight weeks. Okay, so great. So we, we look forward to having that event and inviting the council and staff to be out there as well. Awesome. Great. Forward. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Moving on to consent agenda, item B. All items appearing under consent agenda will be acted upon by the city council with one motion without discussion. Should any council member or other person request that any item be considered separately, the item will be taken up at the time as determined by the mayor. Do I have a motion for the consent agenda? Briefly, Ms. Uh, I'm sorry, oh. Madam Mayor. I just want to also read out loud um, one of the items on consent is uh, adoption of uh, in reading by title only, ordinance number 827. Ordinance of the City Council of the City of Imperial amending the codified ordinances of the City of Imperial adjusting Imperial County City compensation to $720 per month. Go ahead. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Turner. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. I have a motion by 
Um, Obeso Martinez and a second by Tucker. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0. You. Uh, moving on to item C, public hearing items. Um, C1, public hearing approving the engineer's report and ordering the levy and collection of annual assessments for the fiscal year 2023 to 2024 for the Imperial Lighting Maintenance District Number 1, Paseo del Sol and Wildflower Subdivision. Staff report with Mr. Herrera. Oh, yeah. Then I open this public hearing at 741. Yes, Madam staff Mayor, by way, of a, by way of a brief uh, staff report, I believe we have uh, our interim finance person, John Herrera. Uh, we also have a representative from uh, Koppel and Gruber. To the extent you have any technical questions with respect to the information contained in, in the materials uh, that are before you, um, as you know, as and, and my comment will apply to the next three items on, on the agenda. Uh, basically, you will be holding uh, public hearings on all of those items to, uh, as the uh, as the mayor read, uh, to uh, approve of uh, the engineer's report, and all and staff is also recommending approval of the uh, levy and collection uh, of the amount set forth in those reports. As you, as you know, the amounts set forth are are uh, uh, basically designed to. Uh, pay for the items that are listed, either uh, in the case of uh, lighting and, and also uh, separately, you'll be considering uh, the landscape uh, aspect of it. And so uh, obviously the first one uh, uh, relates to the uh, Paseo del Sol and wildflower uh, lighting aspect. So if you have any uh, questions of either the uh, uh, couple and, and, and Gruber folks or uh, our interim finance, uh, they, they would be prepared to answer any uh, technical questions that you might have. Questions? Public comments? Seeing none, I'll close this hearing at 7.42 p.m. Um, do you have any recommended actions? Do you have any motions? Motion to approve Resolution number 2023-45. Second. I have a motion by Obeso Martinez and a second by Tucker. Uh, please vote. Motion carries 4-0. I'll make a motion um, to adopt number 2023-46. Second. I have a motion by Obeso Martinez and a second by Tucker. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0. The item C2, uh, public hearing approving the engineer's report and ordering the levy and collection of annual assessments for fiscal year 2023 to 24 for the Imperial Landscape Maintenance District Number 1, uh, Paseo del Sol and Wildflower Subdivisions. Um, and I'll open this hearing at 7.43 p.m. Yes, Madam Mayor and Council, uh, I have no ad additional comment other than uh, beyond what I indicated with respect to the first one. This is uh, relates to the landscape portion for the uh, Paseo del Sol and Wildflower uh, subdivisions and staff recommends approval of the uh, uh, resolutions after hearing uh, any uh, public comment uh, you might have and, and, of course, answering any questions you might have. have any public comments? Seeing none. Uh, I'll close this hearing at 7.44 p.m. And do you have any questions, comments, or a motion from the council? I'll make a motion to approve to, um, adopt resolution number 2023-47. I have a motion by Obeso Martinez and a second by Tucker. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0. 
a motion for the second action. Um, make a motion to approve resolution number 2023-48. I'll second. I have a motion by Obeso Martinez and a second by Tucker. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0. And then we'll move on to items D, action items. Um, for item D1, I need to recuse myself. I work for a subcontractor that may be utilized in one of the post proposed contracts. This qualifies. Uh, and we need a we have C3. C3. Oh, my gosh. They all look the same. <laughs> okay. Moving on to item C3, public hearing, approving the engineer's report and ordering the levy and collection of annual assessments for the fiscal year 2023-24 for the Imperial Landscape Maintenance District Number 2, Zone 2005-03 for fiscal year 2023-2024 in Sky Ranch. And I'll open this public hearing at 746. Do I have a staff report? Or uh, yes, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, same exercise with respect to uh, Sky Ranch. Uh, you have the uh, engineer's report uh, before you, and staff recommends that if, uh, uh, after taking uh, public comment, if you have any questions, uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Herrera and the couple and grouper folks available to answer any questions you might have. Public comments. I will close this at 7.47 p.m. Do you have any questions, comments, or a motion from the council? I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 2023-49. Second. I have a motion by Obeso Martinez and a second by Tucker. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0. Lastly, adopt resolution number 2023-50. Second. I have a motion by Obeso Martinez and a second by Tucker. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0. Uh, Madam Mayor, I just want to thank the Copeland, uh, making them, Copeland Gruber folks making themselves available and also uh, John, who uh, is joining us in the middle of the night from his uh, vacation. Yes. Thank you, all of you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Um, now we'll move on to D action items. Uh, for item D1, I work for a subcontractor that might be utilized in one of the proposed contracts. Um, and the, the, the law, this qualifies as a remote interest. Um, I'm not involved and won't be involved and have no ownership of interest of any of this kind. I actually don't even work on any of these type of projects. So um, Mayor Pro Tim Amparano is going to present this item for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so item D1, award on-call planning services to... Uh, HWL, GAPCON, and LC Engineering and staff report with Oton Mora. Um, good evening, Council. As you may already know, um, the city has a full service planning division, uh, but from time to time, due to the workload, we need, we're in need of a con consultants, uh, well-qualified firms that can help us uh, uh, with some of the projects. Uh, we released an RFP. We received three proposals, and after carefully review, uh, staff recommends uh, to award a contract to HWL, CAFCON, and LC Engineering, and I'll stand for any questions that you may have. Oh, just for the, like, what do you normally use? Land use entitlements, mostly, it's uh, uh, variances, conditional use permits, uh, zone change, zoning tax amendments, uh, just to mention a few. Questions? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Also, for um, just for the record, um, this is not going to have an impact uh, on our budget. It's a pass-through cost. It will all be paid through uh, developer, developer deposits. HWL and GAFCON is three different companies. There's three different so companies. So what we're doing is approving you to use... It, any of, is that what we're Any of those, yes. We usually do a, a in doing my rotation. Okay. That's how we do it with the other companies, the engineering and the building and safety as well. But they're all different style of companies. They do all different things. They do it different things, okay. correct. And so let, let's, let's uh, James, do you have any other questions? Uh, let's 
look at LC Engineering. Did we have any other engineering firms that applied? No, that's they the were the only one. The only three. Okay. Yes. Um, and then same thing with HWL and Gafcon, the only ones that applied. That is correct. Okay. Is is there any uh, burden or financial impact for these services that we have? I know it says there's it's a pass through, but let's say if we have uh, issues, does that come back to us, or is it something if we have that we're issues? Approved? Yeah, we have. Uh, we can always, uh, you know, remove the contract. Okay. Any other questions? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve um, the uh, award on call plan to services HWL, um, GAPCON, and LC Engineering. Okay, got a motion. Second. Second by Mr. Tucker, please vote. Tucker reflect that uh, this is abstaining. Motion. motion carries 3 1 with the 1 abstain by Mayor Burnworth. Thank you guys. Yeah, on item D2, Victoria Rent Subdivision, unit number 3B, sewer lift station acceptance, uh, staff report with Athone Mora. Good evening, Council. Um, this item is for the sewer lift station located on Aiton and Legakis, on the south, southwest corner of Aiton and Legakis within the Victoria Rent Subdivision. Um, all the improvements have been completed and is fully functional. Um, and staff recommends acceptance and recordation of the grant deed. And I'll stand for any questions that you may have. Questions or comments or a motion from the council? No, but I'll make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm good on this one. We're lift stations. I have a second. I have a motion by Tucker and a second by Amparano. Please vote. Motion carries 4 0. Do I have a motion for the second recommended action? Accordance of grant deed for sewer lift station from Imperial Ranch Partners LLC. I have a motion by Tucker and a second by Amparano. Please vote. Motion carries 4 0. Item D3 purchase of portable office container with staff report with police chief Michael Crankshaw. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff. Uh, thank you for your time. In direct connection to the growth of uh, the city and then specific to the department with the personnel and equipment needed. Um, the usable space in our current facility, as we all know, is at capacity. Um, with that lack of, of space, we, we uh, determined that this would be a suitable possibility uh, as to utilize a fully renovated 40-foot uh, container office. Um, we went out and got some pricing. Um, one of the, the purposes of this is to create that, that first void area so we can start working the workspace within the department. This container would be divided in uh, two sections, an 8 by 14 foot office uh, uh, and then a 8 by 26 foot uh, equipment area. Uh, both would be climate controlled with a 1.5 uh, mini split and it would be painted the same colors as our current building. It would go where the command vehicle used to be. We're in the process right now of, of getting some shade and move the command vehicle onto a, uh, onto the yard uh, over at the city yard. It would have uh, the bars and it would have the, the doors. Uh, it would be facing inside towards that, that area that we normally have that command vehicle at. Um, with the use of this, it's going to allow us to not only store all of our equipment, but in a controlled environment, it's going to prolong that equipment, its life, its shelf life. And uh, the office space is actually going to be 
uh, one of our sergeants who will be doing the quartermastering of all of our equipment on top of some of the other uh, collateral duties that they'll be taking on. Uh, and then the beauty of this is if we ever need to use it for a different department or ever you need to move it to a different location, it picks up and goes. So uh, we feel it's a, it's a great, uh, it'd be a great uh, piece for our department and it would work out well for us. Um, would be very minor prep work on the ground that's already there. It was just class B and we have a small connection um, to, it's less than 12 feet there. And the impact, uh, we'd be asking to use the development impact piece as it is directly related to the, the growth of the department. So, yeah, I stand for any questions. Funds, where are the funds coming from? Uh, it's Fund 65, our city developmental impact fee specific to uh, the PD in this case, um, which is related to that type of activity. If approved tonight, what is the time frame? Six to eight weeks. To get the container here or get it all up and running? Well, uh, I think that within that time frame, we can have it prep ready to go. I was advised it would be six to eight weeks delivered in place, and then it's a matter of a connection. At that point, it's, it's up and running within a week or so. No surprise. I mean to us as a council that you guys are asking for more space. I mean, you go into the police department and you guys are in very tight quarters, so. It, uh, it has been a challenge, uh, not just for the police department, for everyone. Yeah. Um, and I think that we are, we're, we're being creative in the way that we're solving these problems. So. Working with what we got. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate that. Me. I have a motion by Amparano. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Amparano and a second by Tucker. Please vote. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Item D4 sees emergency repairs for city wastewater lines and alleyways. A staff report with Jackie Looper. Several months back, we had of the line we've made some temporary repairs to try to get through the summer and we have all the parts to replace the line but we're going to try to nurse it on down the road about six eight ten weeks till the weather breaks before we tear the alley up and replace the line from behind the grocery store all the way down to Zarabi. blame me on that one <laughs> i'll make a motion to approve I have a motion by Tucker and a second by Obeso Martinez. Please vote. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Moving on to item E1 department reports. Do any departments have anything to report, Police Chief? Yes, I just want to report on today we had an event uh, with the uh, a fire in the, uh, in the morning time over off of uh, Liberty Road. Uh, three of those uh, structures were uh, burned out. We have a uh, individual in custody for arson for that, and it was booked in the Imperial County Jail. Uh, so I just wanted to make you guys aware or take any questions you may have or, or Chief Flores. Um, if you have any questions, I'll take that now. All good? I don't have any questions. I thank you for catching the guy who did it. Appar apparently, the, he may uh, had some issues over in El Central doing the same thing. So, um, I did want to touch on coming up towards. Uh, we're we're dusting off our youth police cadet program, awesome. and uh, hopefully, we'll be working with Tony and everyone else to uh, for twenty to twenty five individuals to come on. And uh, there's some really neat stuff that's coming up. We also have found a coordinator for our reserve program. And right now there's an outstanding uh, new group of cadets, our uh, academy cadets out at IVC that we want to really try to connect with. Yes. Um, we are also in the, uh, uh, with Jackie, we're, we're making progress on repairing the kennels. 
And so we're hopefully we'll have something towards, uh, you know, in the next couple of weeks towards uh, for the council to to uh, review. And then finally, uh, just we've, we've had good uh, implementation on the various uh, new te technology with the police department as uh, requested for this fiscal year. So thank you. Oh. Have any other staff reports? Mr. Lopez? Kristen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to um, piggyback off of the chief's uh, news on his um, a cadet and a reserve program that we also have uh, nine positions currently open for recruitment. And so we would encourage anyone who's interested to take a look at our city website careers page um, if you're interested in taking a look and apply. Oh. Yay. Very exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. Here we are as a council. Yay, let's let's get more people. Let's, you know, and everybody else is trying to not do that. And we're like, yes, let's get more. We need them. Uh, yes. <laughs> so we want to make sure we're here to support you guys and give you guys what you need. So. City manager report. <clears throat> yeah, yes, mayor and council. On that note, um, uh, you, you, uh, you may see some new faces. You may you may call and hear an unfamiliar okay. voice, and and uh, so we yes, yeah, so we will try to keep up with keeping you advised of what's happening in that regard. Uh, and so I, I will have I I'd like to take a moment to just thank uh, staff because uh, in 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 the course of br bringing new people on you 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 all know uh, that we are the facility we're in is 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 defined geographically and so we're doing our best to make sure that as we bring folks on they'll have a, a workspace uh, IT is work, working hard to make sure that they have the equipment they they need, uh, and and of course all the departments are, uh, are are helping out trying to make sure that they have a space uh, uh, to and so we we will uh, you know public services uh, as always is kind of at the front end uh, of that and so. Uh, uh, in any case, we're, we're, we're moving forward with respect to trying to make sure that as we bring people on, you know who they are and, and that they have a place to work. Thank you. Thank you. No more staff reports, correct? Uh, moving on, uh, mayor and council member reports. Does anybody have anything to report? A report. Um, Pearl Valley Regional Chamber, they are having a legislation legislative day tomorrow um, it's actually in El Centro July 20th from 4 to 7 p.m. in the old post office pavilion so if you're interested in meeting some of your local representatives um, they should have local state and federal representatives some informational booths and some small business resources as well thank you uh, do we need no yes there's also appetizers that's enticing <laughs> <laughs> Any other? Um, I did get to go to the uh, other pool party we had. And I always mess it up, so it's a movie at the at the pool. Ivan. Yeah, that one, something <laughs> like that. I just it's easier to say I move. I watch the movie at the pool. Um, that was great to see. Uh, just kind of a little tough to watch Jaws while you're trying to swim. <laughs> so, but it was a good movie. I think that was a great turnout. There was a lot, a lot of people. So I did appreciate that. Um, so thank you to that. The other one I did want to say is, you know, for today's event, uh, thank the staff. I know PD was out there working hard, keeping making sure everybody was out of the area. Uh, our fire department uh, you guys did an excellent job. I, we really appreciate all the hard work. Um, a lot of people don't know what it takes. Doesn't don't know what it goes into it. Um, they think, oh, it's just do this and that. No, there's a lot more to it. So um, we really appreciate all the hard work that you do for the city, uh, all the departments do for our city. So thank you guys very much. Um, it's a collective effort. You know, It's not just done by one. But with that incident today, I think uh, with police, fire, public works, and everybody that was out there, you know, Thones Group was out there. Everybody played a part. So thank you guys very much for, for uh, 
not gonna say a good event, but uh, you know, for making something that could have gone bad uh, come out the way we did. So thank you guys very much for that. And with that, I uh, no look forward to a good summer. Stay cool. Stay hydrated. Get out of this heat if you can. It's going to be a miserable 121 tomorrow. Um, and with that, uh, I have nothing to report, but let's adjourn this regular meeting of the city council until the next regularly scheduled meeting to be held on Wednesday, August 2nd, 2nd 2023 at 7 p.m. And I adjourn this meeting at 8.05. Thank you.